Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 BMS. The AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon, or JSAW, is a low-cost and highly lethal glide weapon with a standoff capability. It is the product of a joint venture between the United States Navy and Air Force. The JSAW is a standardised medium-range precision-guided weapon intended to engage defended targets from outside the range of anti-aircraft defences. It is a launch and leave weapon weighing 1,000 pounds and uses a tightly coupled global positioning system, inertial navigation system, and is capable of day night and bad weather operations. The AGM 154A uses GPS INS for terminal guidance. Its warhead consists of 145 BLU 97B combined effects bomb or CEB submunitions. These bomblets use a shaped charge for defeating armor a fragmenting case for material destruction and a zirconium ring for additional incendiary effect. Production began on December 29, 1999. Today we're attacking two enemy mechanized battalion columns identified earlier in the day. We will begin approaching steer point 4. We will then turn towards steer point 6 which is the expected position of the mechanized units at which point we will prepare to commence our attack. Master mode is set to air to ground, with master arm set to arm. Set throttle to 105% to maintain airspeed between Mach 0.6 and 0.95, which is required for release. The Mach number is displayed on the hood. Engage autopilot by setting roll to follow the active steer point and pitch to altitude hold. The JSOWs require approximately 3 minutes to align. To power the JSOWs, press OSB 7. Alignment status is noted at OSB 6 and progresses from A10 to A01 and then to ready. JSOW readiness is indicated at OSB 13 and will report align or ALN status until A04. With master arm set to arm, a line status will change to ready or RDY, indicating that the JSOWs are sufficiently aligned. We now begin to define the attack parameters. As we expect to attack a vehicle column, we will release two JSOWs in trail with 1,200 feet spacing. To select trail, press OSB 19 to cycle between the available options, which include single release, tandem and trail. To set spacing between the two bombs, press OSB 18, then enter 1200 and press OSB 2 to enter this spacing. With spacing of 1200 feet, the first GSR will hit 600 feet short of the aim point, and the second will hit 600 feet long. Approaching steer point 4, increment the active steer point with the ICP rocker switch to steer point 6. The JSAW should now indicate ready status, though they may not be fully aligned yet. Select the targeting pod or TGP on the left multifunction display or MFD with OSB 13. Select air to ground sub mode by pressing OSB 1 and OSB 6. To make the north meter stick option active, enter the control page with OSB 5 and then press OSB 19. Meter stick is the number to the right of the crosshair and indicates the length in meters of each of the four lines and is used to gauge distances. Exit the control page by pressing OSB 5. Note that cloud cover inhibits use of the TGP. To return to the fire control radar or FCR page, press OSB 14.
For more detail, press OSB3 to step between normal view to Doppler beam sharpening or DBS2. Note two vehicle columns are clearly visible on the FCR. We now need to define the attack azimuth, end game entry altitude and range on bearing. Attack azimuth controls the direction from which the JSAW approaches the target. End game entry altitude sets the altitude at which the JSAW will release its bomblets and range on bearing sets the distance from the target at which it should turn onto the attack azimuth. Vertical and horizontal lines intersect at the centre of the FCR. The vertical line indicates our heading, which is approximately 295 degrees. We will first target the column on the right, with two GSOs in trail. We can define the angle of the attack azimuth by using the vertical and horizontal lines as reference points. As the vertical line pointing towards the top of the FCR indicates our course of 295 degrees, the line pointing towards the right indicates 295 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is 385 degrees which gives a compass heading of 25 degrees. We can then estimate that the mechanised column on the right extends at approximately 315 degrees. As we can't estimate distances using the TGP metre stick, we will continue with our original spacing estimate of 1,200 feet. We will use an end game entry altitude of 2,500 feet, and we will use the default range on bearing of 4 miles. Our aim point for the JSOWs will be an Inertial Navigation System or INS steer point, which we will mark using the FCR. Move the aim point to the centre of the right column using the radar cursor keys, which are the shift arrow keys by default. Press Target Management Switch or TMS Up to designate the aim point and make it Fixed Target Track or FTT on the FCR. Select Mark Page on the ICP. Note that as we made the FCR FTT, FCR is active on the Mark Page. To set the FTT position as Mark Point 26, press TMS Up. Note how the mark page has updated. The mark page now has ownership of TMS. To make mark point 26 the active steer point, press MSEL. We will now set a second mark point for the left column. Undesignate the target point with TMS down, which is shift end. Move the targeting point to the centre of the left column and designate the point with TMS up. Note that mark point 27 has now been set. Cancel cursor slew on the FCR by pressing OSB9. Enter the control page on the SMS by pressing OSB5. Enter the attack azimuth of 315 with OSB20 the end game entry altitude with OSB 19 and the range on bearing with OSB 18. <coughs> Exit the control page with OSB 5. Confirm the parameters listed on the SMS page. The HUD will indicate JSO in zone or JIZ around 20 to 22 miles from the target. Each release takes approximately one and a half seconds, therefore when releasing two GSOs in trail, hold down the weapon release button for about three seconds. The FPM will flash and the ready status will be briefly replaced with REL to confirm release. If any of the GSOs fail to release, the station number will be replaced with H for hung, D for degraded or F for failed. Hold down weapon release to release the GSO pair. Bruiser. Now we will use the second pair of JSOs to attack the second mechanised column. 
Select mark point 27, defined earlier as the active steer point. Enter 270 as the attack azimuth and an endgame entry altitude of 2,500 feet and a default range on bearing of 4 miles. When the HUD indicates JSAW in zone, release the second pair of JSAWs. Cruiser. Cruiser. I hope you enjoyed this video on JSAW and as always feel free to like, comment or subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.